Let's talk about Spyderco. Welcome to Blade HQ, everybody. My name is George, and today I'm gonna break down for you everything you need to know if you are shopping for a Spyderco knife. The hope here is that if you showed up and you're just like, Spyderco, what is Spyderco? My job is to answer that question for you and give you a broad array of the various products that Spyderco produces and some of the reasons that you should consider them. So we're gonna start this off with perhaps the most popular of these series in Spyderco's lineup, which is the Military series. So the Military came in two versions. There was the original Military that had a liner lock, which is a lock like this one, where there's a liner up front that you push and then you can close the blade. And then there's the Military 2, which made it a compression lock, which is where you push it on the back and then you can close the blade. The Military was popular for a long time because it is just a big knife. And especially a lot of those folks in the military, they like to have a big knife because they can squeeze it into a lot of different roles. You get a nice, long, broad, slicey blade, which can come in handy in a self-defense situation, but also cutting food, opening packages, or digging out slivers or replacing root canals or whatever else they're doing downrange. I deeply admire the people who are in the military, but my goodness, do they squeeze some knives into some weird roles. <laughs> And that's what the military was very famous for. It's a big knife, and eventually Spyderco moved on and made the Paramilitary series. And the Paramilitary 2 is probably the best-selling Spyderco there is. This thing is not quite as big as the original military. Here, I'll pull it up. It's actually a fair bit smaller. But it has the compression lock as well. It has an S45 VN blade, so a nice, good quality blade steel. Great edge retention, solid toughness. Stainlessness as well. And it's just a great knife. And it's come in a few different permutations over the years. So you can get your classic black version, you can get it with a black blade. Recently they came out with this one in Crewware. So CPM Crewware is a fancy blade steel that we'll talk about a bit later. And these are the micarta handles with some special liners going on because Spyderco is aware of a lot of the limitations of materials and micarta is one that likes to warp. So instead of the nested liners like they have on the Paramilitary 2 original, they made these ones the full liners that come all the way to the edge so that the micarta can't warp. So they have this version, and then they frequently will have versions that come out with different blade steels. And right now we have this teal variant with S90V steel. So it gives you more edge retention with a little less toughness than that S45. Great knives all. And Paramilitary 2 is, was, and forever will be a very popular knife from Spyderco. It is just that good. However, some people did want something smaller for legal reasons, or maybe they have smaller pockets or just like smaller knives. And Spyderco listened and they brought out the Para 3. So this is a Para 3 and I'll hold it up next to a Paramilitary 2. They are quite a bit different in size, but you can definitely see the fingerprints of the one on the other. And what I really appreciate about the Para 3 is Spyderco didn't just do the easy thing and just say, take them back Paramilitary 2, go to the CAD file, reduce all dimensions by 10%, and call it the Para 3. They went and they were very calculated. So they gave you the same amount of handle girth, so it still fills out the hand just right, but it's shrunken down a little bit. They gave you that full distal taper still, so it tapers towards the point and towards the edge, which gives you a very, very sharp needle-like point. They gave that on all of them. And the Pair 3 was just so well done, and it has been a smash hit ever since it came out. And it, like the Paramilitary 2, has come out in a few different flavors as well. Here we have the Maximit version. Maximit is a Spyderco exclusive steel that we can talk a little bit more about later as well. And this one has the gray G10. And eventually, people still wanted lighter, and so the Pair 3 Lightweight came out. And this is a good time to talk about one of Spyderco's big historic things is they pioneered the modern pocket knife as we know it. Back in the early 80s, late 70s, Sal Glesser asked, what if there was a knife that you could open and close one-handed and had a pocket clip on it? And so the Spyderco Worker came out. It was the first of the pocket clip. It had a one-hand opener, which is a round hole, which has since been trademarked by Spyderco. And it could be closed one-handed as well. It was a very interesting thing. And the other thing it had well, not the worker, but one of the original Spyderco's had an injection molded plastic handle. 
And they've called that the lightweight knives, and that gives the knives a very light weight, as the name would suggest. They often do so, and they skip some of the liners inside, so unlike the regular pair of three on the pair of three lightweight, the pair of three has full liners on both sides, whereas this one only has this little piece of steel here to run the lock. Everything else is just in the, in the fiberglass reinforced nylon. Done a very good job with this one, and this one as well has been very popular. Comes in the CTS BD1N blade steel. Pair three lightweight, great, great knife. I would say if you're looking for your first Spyderco, this is a very solid option if you're looking to get something USA made. Next up is the first knife that wasn't designed by one of the Glessers. So we can talk about the Glessers for a minute. Sal Glesser and his wife Gail started Spyderco back in the day, and their son Eric is now running the show. And each of them is dyed in the wool knife nerds. And they have made a lot of great designs. In fact, every knife you've seen so far on the table before the smock was designed by Sal and Eric Glesser. But the smock they got outside help with from a guy named Kevin Smock. He is an industrial designer. In fact, you can you may not know it, but you'll see a lot of his stuff in big box stores around. And he eventually got into knife making and he got this design with Spyderco and it has become very popular. And I think I know why. The smock has a bit of a, a, a trick up its sleeve in that you look at this and you'd think it'd be a classic button lock like you see on a lot of knives. You just push the button and it closes. But this one doesn't run the same mechanism. If you look on the back here, I don't know if you can catch this on the camera here. I might have to find it in B-roll. But there's a little lever here because this is a compression lock, just like all the knives we've seen so far, where the lever comes in on the back and it goes wedges between the stop pin and the tang of the blade. And what the button allows you to do is say you have big gloves on and you can't quite reach in with your index finger to right here, or maybe you don't have the finger dexterity, or maybe you're wearing mittens or something, you can't get your finger there, you just use your thumb to actuate the compression lock, and you get all the same strength and benefits of the compression lock, but you actuate it with a button instead. Very clever design from Kevin Smock. And this one, I think the real reason it's been so popular is the blade is very well done. Nice thick stout spine, but a very deep hollow grind, so it slices like a dream, and then its lines are just good looking. I don't know if they're quite my favorite, and I think I would rather go for a pair of three if I were shopping for a Spyderco right now, but I have a lot of respect for the Smock, and I know so many people out there love it, and it's their favorite knife, and they've been collecting forever. Now would be a good time to talk about Spyderco collections, because Spyderco knives often will come in their original version, like this S30V Smock. I mean, we ran an exclusive once that had a CPM M4 blade and a Jade G10 handle, and we've done a bunch of other Spyderco knives with the same setup, and they are collectible. And there are Spyderco collections that you can find that span decades and tons of different models, and they make this giant horde of Spyderco knives we have on the table look quite small. So if you're looking to getting into collecting, Spyderco is a great brand to look at. So next up, we're gonna talk about the Native series, and these ones are also Glesser collaborations. So you have Sal and Eric helping out. We'll start with the Native 5, and this is sort of the flagship of the Native series. And what I love about the Native 5 is its use of space. And I know I sound like I'm critiquing a painting with that, and sometimes I feel like I am with these, but this is a very small knife in when it's closed. Look at this compared to the pair of three. It's a bit smaller, has a bit more of a streamlined pocket presence, not so much of a bump. But when it's open, you can get a full hand on the handle, and if you have a really big hand or you just want to choke up, you can choke up to here, close your hand around it. Very nice control of the blade. It comes with a very strong lockback mechanism, one of the strongest locks there is. And this one comes in both the lightweight and the regular version, so the lightweight has the FRN handle. You can also get the full G10 handles as well. I love the Native series. So well done. And I... It, the, the Native does come in the regular size. You can also get it in the mini and in the large version, which have their own names. The first is the Lil Native. This one belongs to my buddy Theo, the graphic designer here. I walked over to his desk. I looked him straight in the eye. I picked up his Lil Native and I walked away with it. Didn't say a word. It was pretty, pretty fun. Anyway, this is his Lil Native. And if you look at that one compared to the size of the Native 5, it is quite a bit smaller. But somehow, and this just is a testament to Spyderco and their de dedication to making things usable, 
it, it just fills out the hand just right. You can get a nice firm grip on it, solid, and you have easy control of the tip. Very nicely done, Spyderco. Because a knife this small is very hard to get that ergonomic. And they managed to pull it off with a, a lot of really well-placed details. However, if you did not want the small one and you wanted the big one, that's where the Shaman comes in. And the Shaman is my favorite Spyderco knife. And I'll tell you why. First of all, I love the size. It's, you get a nice full grip back here. You wanna choke up, you get a nice grip here. Excellent ergonomics because with a size like this, there's not a lot of sacrifices you need to make. It has the compression lock, which is nice and strong and nice and fidgety. And I was kind of torn when I was originally shopping between the Shaman and the Paramilitary 2. And I chose the Shaman because the Shaman's got quite a bit of a thicker tip. The Paramilitary 2's tip is great for piercing. So if you're opening a lot of packages or you are in an area where you might use your knife in self-defense more, I might go with the Paramilitary 2. But I like to go out in the woods and this feels like a very woodsy knife. And then it also is very fidgety action. Spyderco always tries to make their actions nice and smooth, and they just get smoother with break-in. For this one, you can use this famous spider hole, which is a trademark for Spyderco. You can just open the knife and close it. Or you can do the flick, where you take one of your fingers. I usually use my middle finger, but some people say use the index finger. And you flick the knife open like that. Very fun. And another thing you can do is you can use this top, and sometimes you can front flip it like that. And then the thing that used to bother me about the Shaman has become one of my favorite features is this little nubbin that sticks out here. That's this little point that protects your finger from the edge. And it comes and it sticks out right by the compression lock here. And if you get really good, you can flip the knife open by it. It's just one of the most interesting knives to hold and play with there are. And that's why it's my favorite Spider Co. Love the Shaman. You can get them Blade HQ. They do tend to go pretty quick and sometimes they're few and far between. So if you like a Shaman, pick it up soon. Next up, if you are truly looking for a tactical knife from Spyderco, I think the Yojimbo 2 is the one for you. The Yojimbo is special. It's designed by a fellow named Michael Jenich. He is a fixture in the edged combat world. He's trained a lot of military people. He's one of the world's leading experts in edged combat. And he teamed up with Spyderco to design this. And I will tell you, this might be the weirdest looking knife I've ever seen. It, it definitely has a bit of a different design to it, but when you get it in your hand, you can start to see why. When you put it in your hand, these grooves just fit your fingers just right, and it is very comfortable, and it is absolutely locked in. And then if you wanna go reverse grip, you can too. Although I don't know anything about edged combat. I'll preface anything I say about the knife from here with that. But the knife has a very straight edge with a very deep hollow grind. So through all kinds of materials, it just slices and bites very deep, very easily. And then this absolutely razor needle-like point, it just bites, it cuts. It is a very aggressive knife. And we have a buddy, I have a buddy named Lyons. He's a buyer now, but he used to be in receiving. And when he was in receiving, he'd carry his Yojimbo every single day because literally nothing cuts through cardboard like a Yojimbo. The thing just, it, it is a cutting machine. And yes, it looks weird, but it grows on you really fast because it is just a very well done knife. So that is all of the USA made knives that we have on the table. Make no mistake, this is not all of the USA made Spydercos. This is just some of the most popular models that you can find. There is a whole lot more coming out of their Golden Colorado factory. However, on this side of the table, we have a lot of the stuff coming from their international factories. Some from China, some from Taiwan, some from Japan, some from Italy. They come from all over the world and every single one of them has a lot of features that make them excellent, excellent knives. And we'll start that with the Bow River right here. So the Bow River is a small fixed blade that has a full G10 handle, and it has an HCR 13 MOV blade, and it really excels in outdoor rolls. And even though it goes for well under $50, it's a very good knife in its own right and it can run with a lot of knives that are far more expensive. And one of the things I will mention about it is, first of all, that G10 handle. So you're getting a nice, dense, durable material, and then a full distal taper on the blade, like we talked about, where it's tapered towards the point as well. And that gives you some really cool things. So that gives you a nice thick spine towards the front edge right here. 
So if you're carving wood, making feather sticks, you're gonna have a nice robust blade for that. However, near the tip, it has a bit of flex, almost like a hunting knife or a fishing knife, a fillet knife. So this thing is great for hunting, for fishing, for skinning, for food prep. And I've even heard of some people who will take these and they'll just throw the sheaths away and they'll make these their steak knife set because they're affordable, they're beautiful, very good knives. And I personally wouldn't do that because these leather sheaths are very nice. It has a nice belt loop. It's a great knife and it's for a great price and it'll perform in the woods very well. And every knife we've seen so far, and it looks like every other knife on the table is a folder, but don't think that Spyderco can't also make an absolutely stupendous fixed blade. Next up, we have some of the best budget knives there are. And notice I didn't say Spyderco there. These are some of the best budget knives that you can get. And we'll start that with the Spyderco Tenacious. So the Tenacious goes for about $50. And you might be wondering what corners did they cut because that's about the same size and about the same purpose as the paramilitary too. And I will tell you, they didn't cut any corners that would affect the performance of the knife. They cut some corners in the terms of like, they have these full liners that extend all the way to the side. Whereas they made to shave a few ounces off the paramilitary too by making the nested liners. But with this, they have the full liners out to the side. They have the liner lock, which is a bit easier to machine than the compression lock. And they have a blade steel that isn't quite as expensive and difficult to work with as the S30V. This one's the 8CR13 MOV. And that's a steel that I think it's a bit of a bad rap in the knife industry. And it's on the Bow River as well. But I personally think it's one of the better knife steels that you can take out in the woods. And this is why. If you're gonna take something super high end out in the woods, that's a particle steel that's crazy hard and will hold its edge forever, but you're going out for a long time or whatever, you're gonna have to carry a sharpener too because not just any rock that you can find in the river will put an edge on something like that. However, this steel right here is very sharp, but if you find a good flat stone in a river, just stay right there, keep the stone wet, you can get a very sharp edge right back on this thing in the time of a lunch break. It really works well for the woods. It's a nice stainless, it's nice and tough, and it's a great steel for everyday carry for all kinds of things, and it's fairly affordable. So you can get the awesome Spyderco Tenacious with that G10 handle, 8CR13 MOV blade for around 50 bucks. Very, very good deal. And if you wanna save a little bit more money, you can go with the lightweight version, which has the 8CR13 MOV blade as well. But some people do like the upgraded blade steels. This is a lightweight where it has the FRN instead of the G10. But this one is a CPM S35VN blade, which is very similar to the S45VN that you get up here. But because it's made overseas and because it doesn't have the nested liners and the compression lock, this one goes for around $100. It's a very good deal. You're getting great, great, great steel, awesome Spyderco build quality, a true Eric Glesser design, spidey flickable, fidgety, full hand usable usability. I love the Tenacious, if you can't tell. It was one of my first Spydercos, and I would recommend it to anybody because it's one of the least expensive knives that I would truly bet my life on. Now, if the Tenacious is a little bit big for you, check out the Ambitious series. And this one, we're also gonna talk about the serrations here in a minute. The Ambitious is a lot like the Tenacious, but just a bit smaller. Has a lot of the same features. This one's the S35VN as well. Getting a lot of edge retention there. And very, very nice. Small knife, but it fills out the hand fully. It, it fills out your palm. It's not just in your fingers. It's all the way back here. Great, hard using knife, but it's super small and super light. And now I wanna talk about serrations. Serrations existed before Spyderco did. However, they were definitely popularized on folders by Sal Glesser when he started putting them on there. And there's a lot of people out in the knife community, especially those who really like to sharpen, that give serrations a bad name. And the reason they give them a bad name is because serrations are difficult to sharpen sometimes. They're not too difficult if you know what you're doing, but honestly, do you even really need to sharpen them is my question because serrations, as Lynn Thompson of Cold Steel Knives once said, offer you one more cut no matter what. So your plain edge gets super dull and the thing is like a butter knife. It can cut butter, but it won't open a package. It won't cut meat, it won't do any of that. But if it's serrated, it can chew through it. That's why most butter knives have little serrations on them. Because if you have to cut a piece of bread or a piece of steak or whatever, you can muscle your way through it if there's serrations. But if there's not serrations, Good luck, my friend. And that's why I think serrations are really great on Spyderco knives and any knives in general, because 
They give your knife a level of dependability that a plain edge sometimes can't give you. If you want to baby your edge like most of us knife nerds do, I'm happy to go with a plain edge. However, if you're giving somebody a knife, especially one that doesn't need to do anything super precise or carvy, give them something serrated. Like with this S35VN, I'll bet you this knife will still be cutting just fine in 50, 60, 70 years of regular use because that's just how cool serrations are. <laughs> Anyway, next up we have in the Lockback series from Spyderco, we have the Dragonfly. And I believe this is the smallest knife on the table. In fact, let me, it's either this one or the Little Native. And yeah, it looks like Dragonfly might be just a teeny, teeny bit shorter and is certainly lighter because instead of the G10 handles, you're getting these very slim FRN handles. And somehow you can still get a full grip on it. Very comfortable. And this one's from the Salt series. And I wanna take a minute to talk about the Spyderco Salt series. So Spyderco makes a bunch of knives that are designed to go to the ocean called Salt. And they use special blade steels that are designed to resist rust. So H2 is one of those. It is chemically almost impossible to rust this steel. I've seen people get a little pad here and there, but it is covered in fish guts and ocean water and hasn't been cleaned in four years. But the H2 steel is very soft, so it's easy to sharpen. And if you get the serrated ones, it'll stay sharp quite forever. But excellent, excellent knives. Spyderco Salt Series are great for rescue, for fishing, for scuba diving, etc. Anything where you don't want to have to worry about your knives, cleanliness and or maintenance while you are adventuring on the open sea. Next up, we have the Delica. And the Delica is, for many, the gold standard of everyday carry knives. It's got a great size, it's got a great handle, it's got a great blade steel, it's got a great price, it's got a great lock. It's just an all around well done knife. And I really appreciate it. It's a Sal Glesser design, it's one of the older knives, and it's the Delica 4 because it's been through four iterations. And iteration is the story of Spyderco. That's why most of these, like the Para 3, Paramilitary 2, Military 2, Native 5, Yojimbo 2, all of these have a number after them is because they are iterated because Spyderco is always trying to improve. They call it CQI, Constant Quality Improvement, where they are reading into what people are saying on the forums. They're looking at reviews. Eric Glesser himself attends every single warranty meeting to see where knives are failing out in the field so that they can make the perfect knife for you. And that's where the Delica shines, in my opinion. It is just such a well done knife and I wouldn't change a thing. However, there is a larger version of it. So if you want something bigger, you can go with the Endura. And the Endura, I believe, is actually older. And this is one of the first knives to have that injection molded handle that we talked about over here on the Para 3 Lightweight. Definitely pioneered the concept of the lightweight knife. Gives you a very nice, big, strong, stout knife, but it's not super heavy, and it's not gonna overwhelm you in the pocket. And they're not super pricey either, this series. What some people say, Delka's a little small, and Endura's a little big. What's the just right planet here? And that is the Indela. It's right in between, has a bit more of the blade shape of the Delica, a bit more of the handle of the Endura, and it's just right down the middle, threads the needle between the two. These come in a bunch of different blade steels, but they're standard with VG10, which is a great steel originally made for kitchen knives, but performs well on these folders as well. Next up, we have a titanium frame lock from the Sleesh series. So Sleesh, I forget his first name, is a designer who's made a bunch of knives for Spyderco. In fact, his Bowie, Sleesh Bowie from forever ago, is prized among the collectors. And those who have them are very difficult to make part ways with them, but it is now discontinued. But this Techno 2 has his design and it is just so well done. It's got an XHP blade. It's got a nice, easy to actuate mechanism. As you can see, it's got a fairly thick titanium handle. But if you look here where it's milled so it can bend, it's actually rather thin. So it's not gonna hurt your thumb at all to depress it. And then this little area by the thumb hole both allows you access to the blade to open it and access to the lock to close it. So it's gonna give you very well used real estate here. Not too hard to work with, easy to cut with, an absolutely solid knife all around. And just as an extra little splash of fun, there's some green backspacers on there as well. Check out a lot of these titanium frame locks made over there in Taiwan factory. Spyderco does a very good job with them. The last knife on the table is actually the Spyderco I've been looking at lately, is the 
Stretch 2, and this one's with K390. The Stretch 2, I really appreciate because I think of it kind of like the Indela, where in, in that same size, but instead of having the handle come all the way to the front, they moved this guard back so that you could choke up with your finger. And I really appreciate the ability to do that. Some people like to stay further away. It's a bit safer that way, but I like to be able to choke up here. I find it's plenty safe and you can get access to this very close section of edge here if you're carving wood or something. The thing I wanna talk about on the Stretch 2 is this K390 blade steel. This one uses a very fancy steel, K390, that's special because it is a carbon steel that gets really hard and has incredible wear resistance and edge retention. So you won't have to sharpen it very often. It's fairly tough. It's a great everyday carry steel, especially for places like here in Utah. It's fairly dry all the time, so you don't have to worry about the rust on the carbon steel. But as much as we love it, the reason you don't see more companies using K390 and Maximit, which I believe is a Spyderco exclusive, and S90V and Crewwear and LC200N and all these random steels that you never see anywhere else is because Spyderco is committed to fighting the hard fight so that you can have a better knife. They make sure all of their knives have excellent designs and they will, are not afraid to brave a crazy material for it. So all of these materials are, pose an extra challenge to Spyderco to work with, but because they are willing to fight that fight, you can get a better knife. So this year at SHOT Show, I was talking to Eric Glesser, a man I deeply admire, and I asked him, because they just brought out a sprint run of 15 V knives, and give you a brief metallurgy on that, it's 15% vanadium. So it's incredibly hard and some of the most wear resistance that you'll find in any steel, which means it must be an absolute bear to grind and heat treat and all the things. It is a, it is a nightmare to work with, but for some reason, Spyderco is working with these nightmare steels because what's great for us is often difficult for them. And I asked him why, I'm like most of your competitors aren't doing this. They're not using the crazy steels. They're using solid steels that they can work with and are acceptable to the end user. Why are you going absolutely nuts with it? And he says, it's constant quality improvement. It's because how are developments in knives ever going to be made if somebody isn't willing to pioneer them? You can walk the path that's already been trod or you can blaze a new one. And that's what Spyderco has been doing since day one. They've been innovating, trying new things, walking the hard path so that some of the best knives in the entire world can come to be. And I'll end with a quote from one of the owners of Blade HQ. He said, there are many knife collectors, but those who know will carry Spyderco. I believe that as well. Anyway, thank you all for joining us today. If you have any questions about Spyderco, we're gonna link a blog in the description where you can learn a bit more and feel free to leave a comment and ask or reach out to our customer service department. We're happy to help you there. We'll help you find all the knives you need. And our goal is to get the perfect knife for you in your pocket as soon as possible. And you can find it at bladehq.com. If you enjoy this, just subscribe to see more knife content. Check out the website over at Blade HQ. We'll see you next time.